beat uh, Clyde Bank 2-0 in the last round of the Cup. We have Lex Richardson on the bench today. He played from the start of that game. And Frank McDougall comes in at number nine. And at number 11, the experience of Ian Scanlon, who's played in a cup final. He got a runners-up medal uh, when he played for Aberdeen and scored a very fine goal against Clyde Bank. There's only one change in the Dundee United team, which beat the Yugoslavs on Wednesday night. We, of course, have the flu victim in Ralph Milne whose manager tells me that he would have been dropped anyway, at least have been on the bench today. Ian Gibson and Philip are there with their Billy Kirkwood winning the number nine shot, probably playing in the Ralph Milne role. And uh, is a highly versatile team, young Malpas, for example, Morris Malpas, only 19 years of age. He could play in midfield and in defence, remains to be seen exactly where he finishes up. And the referee just behind David Dodds there, the well-known features of Brian McGinley. That little touch of cup tie tension betrayed in the movement of the feet there as we get the game underway on a pitch which was doubtful at nine o'clock this morning. There was a lot of rain on it, it had been torrential rain in Glasgow. But they tell me down here that the pitch dries out reasonably well and indeed the rain has stopped. There's a very strong wind blowing left to right in Dundee United's favour. Into Kirkwood, almost got hold of that. Scanlon, very deep indeed. Beautiful turn by Stoddick and he almost got away with it. Fine little touch by Stoddick immediately. Jackie Copeland had to come right across, blot him out. So Eamon Bannon to take this corner kick. Driving it low and Goff came in. And that did deceive the St. Bernard defence. I think they expected the high chip across and Richard Gogg coming roaring in like an express train. Wasn't so very far away from it. Back and way forward. Good morning there by Jimmy Bow. That's a bit of a tight ball. Scandal referee rightly waves play on. Ball by the outside of his foot. That's McDougall. Good positioning by Fitzpatrick. Free kick. And there is young Malthus, number three. Quite clearly now playing in midfield. There is Malthus now. He's deserted the full bag role for the day, playing right in the middle of midfield for Dundee United. Move by Scanlon, McAvenny. That's Fitzpatrick. United hemmed in at the moment. Five minutes of the game gone. A good curling ball, and it's a good touch by McAvenny. A nice, neat curling ball, and McAvenny got right forward. A neat touch. Hamish McAlpin, not highly troubled by it, but I think McAvenny fell very awkwardly and causing some concern to his mates. Well, he's obviously in some pain, and the submitted physiotherapist not at all happy about it. I think he must have twisted his neck as he landed. And they've always got to be very careful about injuries to the head, but uh, he's carrying on. A nice warm round of applause from the submitted supporters. And Stark. Took that awkwardly bouncing ball very well, and it come up to the chest. Throw to St. Villain. Bad ball by McCormick, much too obvious. Stutter can't get away from the defender close by him. Jackie Copeland. Used to be a teammate of, uh, well, at least he was at Dundee United. Patrick slid into it well, given away though. Couldn't get the one two operating with Banner. And in a cup time, the stakes like that can be very heavily penalized. Bannon with it, that's a good ball, and that's just beyond Dodds. Billy Kirkwood. That basic triangular move by United. The long high ball by Bannon towards Kirkwood, the header down, 
tempting the goalkeeper forward and David Dodds perhaps just a fraction slow deciding to go for it might just have got him for the touch Alp is playing very well getting to the tackle first looking sharp and distribution has been uh, effective good spatter And to players coming towards him, and eventually they do. Fitzpatrick. Easy one for Hegarty. It'll go back to the keeper. Hegarty, who's, uh, <clears throat> I suppose, one of the most reliable defenders in the game. Holt. He touch inside. Stunnock turns brilliantly on that kick win. Well, the two players almost producing the goal. Appreciation by Paul Sturrock. But it was he who set it up. That so familiar pirouette, touching it to the side, and that was well driven by Kirkwood. Hegarty jumped very well. Fast to the side, too much on it. Billy Kirkwood playing wide on the right, uh, which is exactly where Ralph Milne would play. Scanlon did that very well indeed. Bone, too late for the pass. Malthus swung away by Bone, his strength paying off. McAvaney, now this is the calibre of the man, that's a good effort. That brilliant little touch, wriggling free. And just a, a bit too much loft, getting right underneath it and showing nevertheless how dangerous he can be. Beckett. That's Scanlon. Bone. Well away by Hegarty. David Dodds nicely to the side. Bannon couldn't pick it up, though. And now Mc, uh, McCormack. Here's McDougall. Did get a view of goal there, it's a 1-2, that's a nice move. No penalty. And one of the best moves that uh, St. Mullen have turned in in a match. Clay coming right from the linchpin. McDougall going forward strongly, getting the 1-2, almost getting in. There's certainly no penalty kick in there. Dodds. Hegarty, the race is on, Copeland is there. Thompson had committed himself and that's a good back, sliding, judicious pass back. Fulton, there's Stark. Good ball to Dodds, good running by Dodds. The players inside him. There's Stark, that's an excellent ball. He's onside and he's missed it. Well, well, very unlike Stark. Clear, distinct chance. Oh, and it's wide by Dodds, and Billy Thompson picks it up easily. Well, Paul Stillock should have put that one away. He might have been slightly surprised that he was on site, but he was OK, and he turned round, the goalkeeper narrowing the angle, and for him, for the way he can finish, that was a rather ineffectual ending to it all. We are in injury time. Breaks well to start. Well, I'm not sure if the two players realised where that had broken, but David Dodd picks it up. As I said, we're well into injury time now. One minute. That's Kirkwood. Stuttock. Sends Bannon away. Might just pick it up, he does. That's to the right foot. And picked off again, the crossing from the line by Bannon. Not so good today. And I think the halftime whistle is gone. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it's been a bit of a letdown. Not the quality game that I expected it would be so far. And quite frankly, the sooner we get to the second half, the better. 
And just behind McDougall, you can see Lex Richardson, who's come on as a sub at the start of the second half. And obviously, Frank McAvenny, who's gone off, did take uh, a knock in that injury he had early in the game. Probably hasn't fully recovered. And we'll pick up in just a second. Ian Phillip, who's come on as a sub, and you'll see him maybe just in defence. Uh, he has come on. There he is now. He has come on as a sub in the middle of the park. And... There's no doubt about it that uh, the first half, as I said, was disappointing in terms of spectacle and the people who've turned up and not uh, what you would call a, a pleasant afternoon weather-wise must be disappointed in it as well. Richardson, who, by the way, scored the goal in the league game that we did down here about a month ago, that's a good ball. Hegarty goes right across. A good, strong run, though, by McDougall. And we'll have more of that, please, at either end, I may say. Got. That's Neri. Holt came round the outside very well indeed. Saw Kirkwood touching it. That's a bad ball by Holt. Gods, it's low, Stunnock goes for it! <laughs> and Thompson had made his dive before Stunnock tried to make contact even. And if that had any height in it at all, it would have gone right over Billy Thompson. Good run by Stunnock going towards the line. And yet that was slightly loose altogether. It That's a good ball, Scanlon, there's plenty of space now for Scanlon. Stark goes with him. And there's... Beckett comes steaming in again. Well, if determination goes for anything, Alec Beckett is the best player in the park. Driven forward constantly, and that is a goal kick. Alec Beckett... Uh, has uh, seen a lot of service with uh, St Mirren and today I'm sure exasperated by some of the efforts to score and he's come forward quite a bit himself on the left we are in uh, the last half of the second half as it were Bone did that well, stop Bone Oh, that was well meant. Nobody had gone forward quickly enough in that quick one-two movement, triangular again. Brought about a little uh, flutter of danger, but eventually McAlpin was on it. Malpas, Kirkwood, no one in it. Straight out of play by Malthus. I honestly don't know what has afflicted the players today. It's not even as if it's been a tense sort of game. They've just slipped into a mediocrity. Maybe the game last week didn't help at all. Philip gives away the corner. Scanlon will take this. It will be an in-swinger. There it is with the left foot. And that is very close to McAlpin. Oh, that's a great score! Good pressure. At last, the deadlock has been broken. That was a very good corner kick taken on the 24th minute. It was an in-swinger, it was a troublesome ball. Not quite back to Tony Fitzpatrick. And look at the way that went into the back of the net. Nice touch by Stunnock. David Dodds tries to get there. And Fulton, well under control. Nothing despairing about it, but uh, very hard back for the keeper. Stark 
not quite got the tackle. United have been hemmed in since that goal. McDougal lets it go. Malthus is there. Gives it away. Oh. Almost a comedy of errors there, but uh, Eamon Bannon now. United badly needs some of his drive. Really has got to produce it now. Kirkwood. There's Bannon. Good running by Kirkwood. There's a chip across. Holt is in and a brilliant clearance. McDougal got behind it. Now Bannon. This is United's retaliation. Bad ball though by Kirkwood. Needed more strength. Well, in terms of resolution, determination, St. Martin certainly deserved the lead eventually. That's a free kick. Neri with it. Good looking ball. Thompson is out and under pressure, gripping that comfortably. Jimmy Vaughan gets it. McDougall's in at the back. Malthus under pressure. Stark is up there. That starts ball cut off by Phillip. Corner kick, and it's all simpler and now. The mass of uh, St. Burton supporters behind the goal now. Five minutes ago, dancing and jubilation. There is another corner kick. It's still there, it's just knocked away. Appeals for a penalty, strongly by McDougall, who fired that in. Instead, it's another corner kick. There's a bit of blood there on the shirt of uh, McDougall. He went right up, right into the middle of that defence for the corner. Again, another in-swinger. This time, the goal kick given and the pressure eased. Dodds, Dodds turns it beautifully, Dodds going at Copeland, brought down a very late tackle, that's a free kick. So, Edmund Bannon will take this, the D United supporters have been extremely quiet during this match, not much to shout about, but here is Bannon to take this with the right foot this time, Hegarty is there, down it goes, Billy Kirkwood, and they can't put it away, it's another corner kick. And at a very expert and congested St. Burton defence, the vertical black and white tail barrier there preventing Kirkwood from running that hole. Bannon, the in-swinger. Nobody can't get it. David Nelly's there. Look at the congestion of players. Dodds, and he can't push it round, and it's a goal kick. Well, you know, one I think was the final score, and one way of separating the teams today was to take a count of the number of players on either side who seemed clearly keen to win the match. Well, St Mirren had more on a straight head count, and they're thereby in the semi-finals. Now, more players of them in the second half, in particular, became involved in pushing United back into defence, and although United did have one or two clear-cut chances, they never really looked either like winning or setting.